You're watching The Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, replacing missing teeth with dental implants. According to my first guest, he says nobody should be wearing a loose fitting denture. We've had him on the program before, Dr. Eli Jackson. Dr. Jackson, welcome to the program. Well, thanks for having me back, Randy. Welcome back. All right. So I know you brought some photos. So I we'll, did. We'll try to show as many of those as we can see. Okay. Now, for people that don't know your center, um, who's the typical patient coming in for dental implants? Uh, and what are the different services you offer? Uh, we offer a wide array of services, but as far as the typical patient that comes in, it's people that have had dentures for years, uh, mostly ill-fitting dentures. Uh, we have people that are actually in the stages of heading toward dentures, and they have uh, teeth that are hard to eat with, hard to chew with. They feel like it's causing bad breath. They have infection in their mouth, and they just uh, are ashamed to smile, and they can't eat very well. You say that uh, there's a lot of the people that go to see you that were told elsewhere it could not be done or they didn't have enough bone. Elaborate on that. Well, there are a lot of people that have been told that there's nothing that can be done for them. And usually it's because they don't have enough bone. And typically I would say, well, that could be the case because the dentist or the time that they were told that, there might not have been any, any way to, to fix their denture. But now with the new advancements in, in techniques and the new laser and the comb beam and the three-dimensional scans, uh, virtually just about anyone can have enough bone to place a denture. Now, you were on my show a couple of years ago, and I think your goal back then, we were kidding about it, but that you were going to wipe out loose-fitting dentures where you are. So there, there's, there's still a lot of people wearing dentures where you are? Oh, just there are untold number of people that still wearing loose-fitting dentures. And... Unfortunately, I just don't think they know their options. You know, they don't yeah, really. Why don't they come in? I mean, if it's as good as you say it is to get a full arch of teeth that are locked in there. Okay. Well, there, there are several reasons. Maybe the first reason is once they get dentures, they typically don't go back to the dentist. And so if they don't go back to the dentist, they aren't aware of the options that are out there now. They just don't, aren't educated on what can be done today. So typically they just do not know their options. They're out of the system. They don't go to the dentist, so they aren't able to learn the new, new techniques that are available. Uh, and I, I have to say this, the typical denture patient or the patient that's heading toward dentures, they have been to the dentist 30, 40 times to patch here, patch there, leaking it's fillings. It's expensive, right? It, it, it's very expensive. They don't ever get anything fixed. They just get patched and, and their teeth, they're, they hurt to chew with, they have bad breath. And so typically, eventually they do get all their teeth out. And truthfully, once they get rid of all that pain and all that discomfort, they're relieved. They're like, oh, I don't have pain anymore. I don't want to go back to the, de to the dentist. And they just aren't aware that this can be so more, so much more helpful for them just to have fixed in it, fixed teeth in there. So they're afraid to go in. They are. Typically. Do you still hear that, by the way? What, afraid to go in? Yeah, like no offense, doctor. Oh, hear that every day. You really? Multiple times every day. Yeah. Do you have at least a good comeback after all this, these years? I just say I hear it all the time. I said, it, no offense taken. Do you end but, up winning them over? Oh, generally, always. Like where they go, I love coming here? Well, they... they Not that far. Well they are amazed that they can get so much done and really not even remember having the procedures procedures done. The sedation really handles the fear. Hey, you're the big sedation guy in your town, right? We do, we do a lot of sedation. We, we see a lot of patients that are fearful, have anxiety, and this just, you know, they're skeptical as well. But once they get it done and have had all this done and don't really remember being there, then yes, we do win so them over at that point. This sedation is, is just IV sedation. It's safe? I it mean, is, very safe. Yeah, we, we do oral sedation, we do IV sedation. Uh, it seems like more and more people are opting for the IV sedation just because they feel like they can get sedated a little bit better and they just don't want to remember the procedure. Is this true? I mean, they go in, they get it done, and then they don't remember that? Very rarely do they remember ever being there that day. So. so it's not a painful thing at all during the procedure. Oh no, they're still they're still numbed up, still very comfortable. Uh, they just don't like the memories, and so the sedation takes care of that. Now you do this in a very unique way, and people need to know this is a real interview. I'm not trying to endorse you or side with you, but I guess across the country, the way and, and especially in your town, the way it's normally done is you go to one guy, 
right. or, or dentist, uh, like an oral surgeon, periodont, that does a surgery. Right. Then you go to somebody else that puts the tooth on top. Right. And then maybe even somewhere else for the imaging, but you do it all right there. Like it's a one place concept. Right. All in one day. Right. Elaborate on that. Right. Well, once we became sedation dentists, we found that typically patients don't want to go to multiple offices to have their work done. And so we just kind of uh, capitalized on that by going and learning how to do, you know, all the facets of the procedure. So that way they can get it all done in our office. And patients really like that. Is it the happiest group of patients? People you give their teeth back? Oh, once they are able to chew and smile again, they become very happy. Another reason they don't come in is they do some self-diagnosis. They think they're too old. And I tell you, I go to meetings all the time. We even have some of our, old patient, some of our own patients that they're in their 80s and their 90s, and they're perfectly good candidates. 90-year-old? Exactly. Why would they want to do this and go through this? Okay. Well, just if, if you think about it, a 90-year-old likes to smile. A nine-year-old likes to eat. They like to feel good about themselves, just like we would. So age really is of no consequence. So they're not more likely to fall out statistically if you're older. No, as long as they're healthy, age is not is just a number. We we can do so. 90, 95 years old. No absolutely, problem. absolutely. They're very good candidates as long as they're good and healthy. You say that uh, we talked on the phone because I wanted you to come out here again right. and, and give me an update. But you say that people's lives are transformed from this. Oh, we have people all the time that just are unable to eat. They, they think they've uh, run through all their different opportunities to be able to eat and smile again. They're skeptical when they come in and we end up providing them with something that's fixed in there that's almost as good as their real teeth. They can smile, it gets rid of the infection, they can chew. It, it transforms people's lives. We had one lady who was a singer. That was her big hobby. She loved to sing on stage. She came in and she could barely eat. And the day of the procedure, we snapped her teeth in, locked her teeth in, and it, it just brought a smile to her face, uh, gave her all of her confidence back. She can eat what she wants. Like what? Well, she, she, she can go out on dates now. She can go sing at the church. She can go eat with her family. She was always embarrassed to eat with her family. She just would have to go to the restroom after she would eat just to clean her teeth. And a lot of times that's pretty embarrassing. But now she doesn't have to do that. Could you eat chewy things? She couldn't. She couldn't eat chewy things. She couldn't eat uh, peanuts and carrots, uh, things. She couldn't eat salads. She loved salads and she was not able to eat salads. Now she can eat salads, so it's like, it's opened up a whole new world for her. So they could actually eat like a pizza, like something chewy. Right. They sure can. They, they can eat foods that she hadn't eaten in years. And so that's how it transforms life. What's lives. the number one food? Yeah, Because you, you probably hear food stories. We do. Like, what do they seem to like the most about this whole thing? Uh, they like to be able to eat ribs. Okay. okay. Of course, right. you know, being in Kentucky, we like to eat ribs. And they, they love ribs. Uh, they love salads. Uh, they love to eat crisp vegetables. Uh, they, they're, they're tired of the the soft, uh, high carbohydrate foods, just bread, potatoes, uh, soup, uh, puddings. You know, they like to bite their teeth into actual food and it just, it, it's a quality of life issue. You know, it just, it, it's a subtle thing, but, but it just makes all the difference in their lives. Randy, let me show you some photos. Sure, sure. I brought some photos. I think, I think that will, you know, as they say, pictures are worth a thousand words and these might even be worth more than a thousand words. Let me tell you about this lady. This lady came to us and the before photo is her smiling as big as she can. That's her smile. That's okay. her smile. She'd had an ill-fitting uh, set of teeth for years and she didn't think anything could be done. They were loose. They didn't look good. Uh, you couldn't tell that she was happy, even though she was. And when you see the after, you're going to be blown away. You're going to be All able right. just to tell how much happier a person she is. Although she might have been happy in the first picture, yeah, yeah. You, you can't tell that. What were her options? So she just had like a denture? She had a denture, already had a denture that was loose, loose and had it for years. Okay. It wasn't, wasn't very appealing to look at. She couldn't eat very well. Uh, and she'd lost all self-confidence. So what'd you do for her? We fixed those teeth in there so she could eat whatever she wanted. Plus, we made it wow. so she, I mean, it, it's just an incredible transformation. So she, she's just, a, a, like I say, you can tell she's a really happy person now. And not that she wasn't before, but now at least you can tell that. So when she talks to people, 
they feel like she's a happy person. They don't think that she's mad. They don't think she's, you know, sad at the world. So it, it, it was just a good feeling for everybody involved. Well, look at the before and after, Randy. Let, let me ask you, does she look younger in the, in the yeah, after? Yeah, she does. Good point. Right. And so it's just all a matter of the self-confidence and she could eat her foods that she liked. She really liked to eat salad. Now she can eat salad. You know, now that her teeth are fixed in there, she can virtually eat anything she wants. You know, one of the things you say that, that a smile is more attractive than a pout. Well, she is more attractive without being superficial here, but she is more attractive in that after. Well, I think she's more attractive. I think she's more sophisticated looking. I just think overall, she just presents herself in, in a better better light. When you say, because you see a lot, of, and I was talking to you and your partner in the, in, the, in, the, in the green room, but you say people are discriminated by their teeth. They Elaborate are. on that. Well, when they go to job interviews, you know, if, if, if their teeth uh, are uncomfortable or, or aren't looking well, then yeah, if an employer has the, you can hire somebody that's smiling or you can hire somebody that's not smiling. You know, that's a good point. Yeah, right. right. And other ways that are discriminated, um, people that are out in the dating dating field. You know, people that smile and are happy and outgoing uh, versus somebody who's not smiling or outgoing. So here's here's another one I think you would really like. Okay. And this lady here, she she's the singer I was telling you about. She uh, had no confidence, but her teeth just uh, that she had. They were ill-fitting, they weren't good-looking. We gave her some new teeth, made them more feminine, made her smile better, it makes her face more relaxed. It, uh, you can look at her eyes and tell how much happier she wow. is. Wow. And it, it, it was just a great result. So now she goes, she sings on the weekends, she loves it. Uh, it. It's just, again, it's just changed her life. It's allowed her to do her favorite hobby in the world and that's sing on stage on the weekends. She looks, uh, she looks healthier. She looks actually, healthier. Look I think she looks a lot younger. That's true. That's true. Like uh, a facelift or something. Well, it, it's almost like that. I mean, it's just really the, her whole facial structure is just a lot more relaxed, and a lot happier. She just got a lot more confidence. If you look at her teeth, uh, one of the things that we really try to do to make them look younger and look more natural is the befores, the teeth don't really follow the lower lip line. Okay. And so that makes her look older. It makes them look not so natural. If you look at the after, you can see we, we've taken, you know, we've, we've gone to great lengths to make sure that we've given her the shape of the teeth. But not only that, we follow her lower lip. And that's the natural beauty, you know, that, that you would typically see. In, in a when, when they see this for the first time, like they're, I don't know, do you give them a mirror or something? We do. We What's do. that like? Uh, gosh, it, it, it's a wide range of reactions. Uh, typically, I mean, there's just a big smile that breaks across their face. Every now and then there are tears, both on the side of the patient and the side of the staff. Uh, it, it's, just a fun, it's just a fun day to deliver some teeth that not only fit, snap in there, but also look just so pretty and natural. Okay, so no more dentures, no more traditional dentures. No more traditional you dentures. You believe everything should be locked in on, on dental implants. Absolutely. Now you also have the option, I guess, for a, a permanent set of teeth, or teeth that don't come in and out, like a full arch of teeth that are just that locked are, in there. That are fixed in, that are screwed in, that the patient can't remove. And that's the next thing uh, closest to their natural teeth. And that's a really, really good option. Let me give you another example. Here's a lady. She had some failing teeth. She had leaking fillings. She had broken teeth. She had root canals that had gotten reinfected. She had bad breath. She couldn't eat. You know, it was, it was sore for her to chew. She just, uh, she did not like her smile. And this is like your typical, the people you see every These day. These are people that are headed toward dentures. All and, right. And we don't like to make dentures anymore. We like to do no more dentures. We like to snap them in or lock them in because it's so much more like their teeth that they used to have when they were younger. But this lady, she came in, she had all those problems. And you know, the final result, I think you'll agree that you can tell how much happier she is. <laughs> the, probably the happiest was just the fact that she got rid of her failing natural teeth that had given her so many problems over the years. So that was just, you know, a very happy day for everybody. So as a result, you know, she was able to eat the foods that she wanted to eat and that was her main main issue when she first came in her teeth were sore they were infected she couldn't eat 
But it was funny, once we gave her denture and she could eat with them, um, her, her one thing she was so pleased. When you pleased say you gave her her denture, you gave her her arch of teeth that locked on the implants. Right. Okay. okay. Right. So we, we don't like to do dentures anymore, so we gave her her teeth that were locked in. Okay. And so that was her main concern. But once she saw her smile uh, and started getting compliments on her smile, she kind of forgot about not being a believer <laughs> well, and it kind of transitioned. She was happier with her smile than her ability to, to eat the foods that she hadn't been able to eat in the past. So, it, you know, it, it, she came in wanting to eat better, but I think she was probably as well pleased with her, with her new smile. Well, she looks much younger, by the way. Yeah, she in does. The, it's amazing how teeth, because, you know, like I told you in the green room, I mean, it's just teeth. And you say, no, it's more than that, right? But it does. It changes their appearance. Right. It, it just changes their whole uh, persona. It changes their personality. Uh, she's probably always been a very, very happy person, but at least now you can tell she's happy. There's a lot of people in your town that just, uh, they never smile. There, there are a lot of people that are either have ill-fitting dentures or are heading toward dentures that if you saw them walking down the street, you would think they were mad at the world. Because one, it's hard for them to smile without the denture falling out, or they don't feel very happy because their teeth hurt and, and they are unhappy. So yeah, there are a lot of people out there that unfortunately, you know, Aren't aren't very happy with their teeth. They they can't smile. They can't chew. They can't eat the foods they want. Um, so it's just fun to be able to provide them with with those kind of things and just get their life back. Yeah, but the people and, and you said that like half the people have a denture that want to get it stabilized. Right. The other half are people that are really going to end up losing all their teeth. Right. right. And they don't want a denture. Right. So, but if you have gum disease or bad gums. Can you still do this? Yes, yes, we still can. That's a common misconception that if they have infection in their gums or their bone, that they can't get implants. And it, actually, it's just the opposite. Once you get rid of the the infected teeth and you get their gums healthy, they're an ideal candidate for the for the implants. So typically, the other fifty percent of the population that's heading toward dentures, many times it's because of the infection. But those are the perfect candidates for people that can get uh, teeth that are fixed onto the implants. You know, Randy, every day we get people that come in there and we do consults for people, kind of looking at their situation. And they're skeptical. They, they tell us that they've been told that they have not have enough bone. Or the people, like we were talking about, that have infected gums and they feel like they have gum disease. But every day we'll see people in the consul consult and, and they just can't believe that we can fix their teeth into their gums, and those are the perfect candidates. Um, there's a gentleman that was in the army, and he had been in the service, and he, had, you know, we we were really proud to have him in our office. And he comes in, and he had developed gum disease. He'd had it for a while, and he just was convinced that there was nothing we could do. But he was hanging on to his teeth for as long as he could because he was afraid once the teeth were gone. He couldn't do anything. So we were able to educate him and convince him that he was the ideal candidate for so what we did. So he saw you on TV? He did. He did. And he's still skeptical. He's Even still when skeptical. He gets there. Yeah, yeah. And he, he had just been told before that since he had infection in his gums, that there wasn't anything they could do. And really? so he, he was just afraid that the implants were not an option. But actually, once we get the implants in there and get rid of the infection, they usually become the ideal candidate to lock those teeth in, and his was a great success story. So now that this guy has his fixed teeth, he's in there, he can smile, he can eat, he doesn't have the pain from infection, he just, you know, he, he was a soldier before, and so he's a proud guy, but now he even stands up straighter, he's out there, he's engaged in life again, you know, he, he just smiles all the time, he's got a good job, uh, he's just proud of his teeth, he's, you know, he's happy that he can eat again, it's just a really good feel-good story, you know. Now, we get a lot of emails all the time. Well, how much are dental implants? And, and I always, we reply back that we just interviewed the doctor. You could call the doctor, right? But insurance, I guess, does not really cover the procedure here in the U.S. I mean, the entire part of it. And, and Medicare, Medicaid does not cover it in the U.S. So what do you do for these people that just don't have all the cash for this? Okay. 
Uh, for people that either have insurance or, or we explain to them that the insurance is going to cover very little, if any. Like you know, a thousand or fifteen hundred max payout that, for the year. That's typically okay. what they will co- that what they will cover. And so a lot of times that kind of really opens a patient's eyes. They're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to pay for that. I can't afford that. But we really go to great lengths to help them uh, find financing. We have two or three financing companies we, we work with. Um, you know, if they have good credit, we can really typically help them find a way to make this very affordable for them. And, you know, that's what it's all about, finding a way to help them get what they desire and what they deserve. And so, you know, we, we know that we do the dentistry, uh, but we go to great lengths to help them figure out a way to help pay for it. Uh, okay. Because, you know, and it, it's just uh, an added benefit that our office does uh, to, to get them, you know, the service that they need. You really uh, get to know these people, it seems like. Well, we, we spend a lot of time with them. And, you know, not only, you know, for the implant procedures, but for making the dentures. And so, yeah, we get to know them quite a bit. You know, we get to know their personalities. They get to know us. So uh, a lot of times the people, they become, you know, like some friends. Like they're friends. Yeah. yeah. What's the number one question? Okay, so if you get somebody in there that their teeth are bad, they have to go. Their whole mouth is crumbling, right? Right. What, what are the frequently asked questions? What do they say to you on those consults? Ah, uh, gosh, they have all kinds of questions, you know. Is it going to hurt? Am I going to remember? Uh, am I going to be able to eat? Can I smile? Uh, are they going to stay in? And, you know, the fact that we're not giving them a denture anymore, you know, we're, we're locking their teeth in. Uh, I know we can make their smile prettier, but the big thing is they want, they want it to eat and they want the pain to go away. And so we can promise that that pain's going to go away. And so that's that's a great you know reason to get get that done. Even though it's not something they're looking forward to, they they just want to be reassured that what we're telling them, okay, we, we can actually back it up. On the couch in the green room, you were saying that people come in, and when it's all done, they say, "I should have done this a long time ago." We hear that all the time, and so many people are just so afraid of losing their teeth because they don't they don't want a denture, they. They don't want the roof of their mouth covered up because they know it's hard to learn to talk again. They know that they aren't going to be able to taste the food as well, that um, you know, they're going to have sore spots. And typically with a typical denture, that's true. But when we can place those dentures fixed on some implants, all those problems go away. So no more adhesive or anything like that? Typically never any more adhesive. And you know that, that's one of the... For people that have had dentures for years, it's hard for them to believe because they hate that adhesive. So this doesn't really hurt. I mean, I know that we, you know, it probably hurts a little bit because you've described it to me. But the bone, I guess, doesn't really have the feeling in there. Right. So they're just sore the next day? Like some Advil? I mean, what do they take? Typically Advil. Sometimes, depending on how involved the procedure is, we might give them some pain medicine. Okay. But typically, as far as the implant placement... You know, there, there's not a lot of discomfort involved with that. But on the day of their actual getting all their teeth, right, when it's, fully, when it's made, they walk in with no teeth, you say, and they walk out with yeah. a full arch of teeth that are locked in or that don't come in and out. Yeah, the, the day, the day uh, that we place the final set of teeth that are locked in, you know, typically they don't get numb, they have no discomfort, they walk in with, with a denture and they walk out without a denture, they have a fixed set of teeth, and it and it's just a good feeling both for them and for us to be able to pr- provide that for them. So it is like a life change. Oh, absolutely. You know, uh, we're really big on smiling, and we, we think the, the smiles are really important. Uh, one of the, the things, though, that we talk about, a lot of these people, when they, when they get the service done, you, you can kind of see their inner smile. You know, you can kind of see them smiling oh, from within. And uh, it, it makes a big difference, you know, on their outward appearance. So when they get that new set of teeth, not only do they have a pretty smile outwardly, they have an inner smile that shows through in, in, in their confidence, in their attitude. Uh, they have much but more I've charisma. Met I, I have a couple. I know two dentures. They never complain. And they seem happy. They, well, they're not going to complain to you. They come to me. They <laughs> complain to me. <laughs> complain to your yeah. office. Yeah, and so, uh, and and again, it goes back to they just don't know their options. Randy, let me tell you a little bit about the life of a denture wearer. Uh, they, they, they just 
grind their food around. They can't really chew it. Uh, they have to wear paste. They A lot of times when they speak or they talk, their teeth click together. I hear that on some and, people. And, and so they try and stay away from people because in their head it's a lot louder. Um, you know, they have no confidence when they're out dating. Uh, a lot of times Good they... Point. they they are embarrassed even with their spouse. They go to great lengths to, to hide the, the denture from their spouse. Is that true? Some people say that their spouse doesn't even know they have a denture? I know. We have tons of patients that said, my, hus that? my husband has never seen me without my teeth in, without my plates in. And I'm like, well, we can fix that. We can fix them in there. And so you never have to take them out. And so that is a big, big reason for them to move forward with treatment. Because if they if they can do that, it's like you say, it's just like their third set of teeth. They don't have to take them out. They don't have to hide anything from their spouse. They can speak without clicking. They can chew their food, actually bite and chew their food. Uh, their self confidence. So get it done. Get it done. If you have a loose fitting done. denture, get it done. Get it done. People have a tough time doing nice things for themselves, especially dental work, right? They do. They especially they, guys. They, you only go in when you're in pain. That's right. And, and typically. Uh, people, they, they love to do things for other people. They love to do things for their kids. They put their kids through college. They help, help their kids uh, and their grandkids, but they usually take care of themselves yeah. at the very last. So, so come I, in for a free I, I say, consultation. I, I say come in okay. for a free consultation. Let us look at your situation. Let us uh, tell you what options we, we can do to help you fix those teeth in right. and just transform your life. All right. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, and if they want to know more, they go to your website. You got a free consultation and, uh, and, and you have sedation. There's no excuses, right? Right. Right. <laughs> All right. Thanks again for coming on the show. Okay. Thank you. You've been watching The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez for now. I wish you good health. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez the authority on health issues.